So we've seen a couple of specific features that have come into PHP in the last three or four versions. But I just wanted to give you a bit of an oversight um, into things to look out for when you're upgrading your platform and the kind of things you can look out for um, in terms of features as well as gotchas as you start to work with the newer versions of PHP. So with PHP 5.4, one of the biggest things is that the performance improved quite remarkably. Even if you don't have any need for shiny new features, if you would just like your existing code to work perfectly well and a bit faster, then PHP 5.4 is a really good option. I have a little graph here on the screen which is showing how long it takes to run the bench.php benchmark that ships with the PHP source code. Now, it's a pretty unscientific experiment because I just used uh, a very ordinary laptop, uh, this one, and ran the script 10 times and averaged how long it takes. So the idea here is that it gives you an, an, in an impression of the relative performance of the different versions of PHP. So it started with PHP 5.3, which is end of life, but I think it makes a nice comparison because it's still, people are widely installed on that. 5.2 was slower again, for reference. So 5.4, you can see, that's where there is a big performance improvement. The time taken to run uh, is down quite a bit. PHP 5.5 is about the same speed. And to my surprise, PHP 5.6 is actually a little bit faster again. So this is showing performance in terms of speed of execution. What's much, much more difficult to measure is the reduced memory footprint. But typically, the clients that I see that I do migrations for are seeing between 20 and 30% memory usage reduction when they go from 5.3 up to 5.4 or 5.5. So there is an improvement in performance, which I think is something, it's a real benefit. You don't have to do anything. You just get this when you move up to a new version of PHP. We have the built-in web server, and I mentioned this in the section about this, the command line interface. I have a more, a more complete example here with showing that you can use any domain name you like. Now, what's cool about this is it's actually running on your um, port here. I'm using port 8080. So anyone else who has network access to your machine can also access uh, the web server. And I hear stories of people running admin tools you know, in the office with the web server. One concurrent user is fine for that, and anyone can access it. The dash T switch is to specify the doc root. So if you're using a tool like Supervisor, which I also showed earlier on in that previous section, you might not want to run the command from the directory which has the web root in. So dash T would let you specify where that should be. The dash C is for configuration. PHP ships with really good example .ini files. So use the development .ini file for your configuration. And then the routing.php file if you do need to do any rewrites or direct requests to index.php, for example. That was new in 5.4. And what's fabulous about the web server is it allows us to very easily compile a new version of PHP and see how our application works with it. Just spin up a new web server, have a click about, see how your application looks, check your error logs. We don't need to commit to upgrading to our whole server or one of the dev servers to a new version of PHP. You can just have a quick play. A couple of other things that changed in PHP 5.4 that I think will be worth mentioning is we got some new array notation. The first block on the screen here is a very traditional way of doing arrays by specifying the index that you want the value to be attached to. And I've also included the, uh, the usual array, round brackets, key value pairs notation. PHP 5.4 introduced that final line on this slide, where instead of using array with round brackets, you can replace that with just square brackets. It's not JSON. We're still using the PHP array notation but it is just a little bit more succinct. And personally, I find I'm using this quite a lot. Worth knowing about, because if you're using tools which have a 5.4 minimum version, you'll see this in the examples. The echo shortcut, so the way that you can put a very short placeholder into your HTML tags, changed in PHP 5.4. 
In PHP 5.4, we removed the INI setting for the short open tag. So it's no longer valid ever to do a pointy bracket with a question mark. You must always open your PHP tags with the bracket, the question mark, and the word PHP. Those short tags are not valid and cannot be enabled. What we did, however, preserve is the ability to do uh, the bracket, the question mark, and the equals sign. It's a shortcut for opening a PHP tag and writing the word echo. So if you have a look at these, this slide, I have a couple of examples. And the two PHP tags there are exactly equivalent. The first one is longhand echoing dollar name. And the second one, the last line in the code block, is the shorthand for echoing dollar name. And you don't need to do anything to turn on that shorthand echo uh, in PHP 5.4. It's always available. And that short open tag config option isn't, isn't present. We removed it. Uh, we actually removed a bunch of things in PHP 5.4, things which had no place in today's language. With 5.3, we introduced the e-deprecated reporting level, which allows us to warn you when you're using a feature which won't be present in the next version. What this means is nothing got removed in PHP 5.4 that hadn't already been agreed upon and flagged as being removed in future in 5.3. So with each of the major releases, so 5.4, 5.5, 5.6, the e-deprecated error reporting level will expand and cover what's going to be removed in the next version. So if you're on 5.3, you expand your error reporting to include e-deprecated and check your error logs. See if there's anything which won't be available in 5.4. 5.4 did remove quite a few things which might cause problems for upgrading particularly very old applications. Um, the register globals is gone. This is a good thing. <laughs> it's been recommended off for a very long time, but it's actually no longer available as of 5.4. If you're using it, your e-deprecated flag will warn you. We can't register long arrays. We removed safe mode because it's not safe and magic quotes because they're not magic. It's no longer possible to enable the allow call time pass by a reference in e-setting. You declare methods and functions as accepting references at declare time. You can't modify that at call time. We also removed Y2K compliance. So um, my apologies to anyone who's still concerned about the Millennium bug. And we also removed the e-reg functions. So if you're using regular expressions, you'll need to adapt your application to use the pReg functions. Those are still present. But the e-reg are not available in 5.4 or in later versions. Just a few things there to look out for. There was a lot of things went out of 5.4 because we had the e-deprecated, the ability to warn you in 5.3. We also introduced some new reserved words, the trait. I'm going to talk about traits uh, and about anonymous functions more in the object-oriented section of this course. Uh, trait, callable, and instead of are your new reserved words. So when you're ready to upgrade, you need to check that you don't have those as variables or method names or anything in your platform. Just enable the e-deprecated on 5.3 and check your error logs. Uh, and then compile 5.4, we've got the new web server. One thing to look out for in PHP 5.4 is that we don't have APC available for 5.4. So if you're accustomed to using the APC opcache, which you should be if you're using 5.2.5.3, uh, we don't have it for 5.4. You should use the opcache extension from Peckle, and that's part of core as of 5.5. So let's talk about PHP 5.5. Some of these features I have already covered. The password hashing, you can find out more about that in the section on security. I've just talked about generators. Try, catch, and finally is for exception handling. And again, that's covered in a bit more detail in the exceptions section later on when, in, when I talk about object-oriented programming. The only other thing you need to know really about PHP 5.5 is that opcache change that I just mentioned. So uh, we changed our opcache. It's bundled by default. You just need to turn some things on. It is only an opcache. It's not a complete replacement for APC. So if you were using the user cache aspect of APC, uh, you need to look into some alternatives. Uh, and there is a link here to an APCU package, which is intended to do that. 
Alternatively, you can just switch out, use memcache, memcache or Redis, something like that. 5.6, the variadic functions and the argument unpacking you have just seen. We also have the ability to import namespaced functions um, and constants, which is really something which we missed. Namespaces came in in PHP 5.3. Again, more detail in the object-oriented section where I do talk about namespaces and auto-loading. But we haven't had the ability to import namespaced functions. You always need to refer to them by their long-handed name. And I think that's just a, a side effect of them not being auto-loadable. So for where we've always had this first example here has worked for classes, for functions we now have the equivalent. So uh, like I say, no auto-loading, so you do need to load that file manually or make sure that it has already been included. Then you can do the use, spe specify that it's a function, give the long-winded name, and uh, then that shortcut will refer to your function. Um, same thing with use const, and of course you can alias both of those things if you do need to give them a nickname or avoid a naming conflict. We have the exponentiation operator in PHP 5.6. Again, it just it's a new math operator. It's equivalent to the POW function, but it's an operator, so it, it fits much more naturally into longer calculations and so on. One other thing which probably doesn't affect us directly as soon as we get PHP 5.6 is that we have the PHP uh, DBG library included. I expect this to make a big impact in the tools that we use. So we'll see better debugging server side and also in our IDE tools. 5.6 really opens the door for that. So look out for new features coming as you upgrade to this platform. When you are ready to upgrade, this is a general guidelines. Don't be afraid of going up through a few versions in one go. So if you've got left behind on 5.3 or earlier, then you can follow this plan. It's not unusual to go from 5.3 straight to 5.5 or 5.6. Uh, once you're investing the time, you may as well. And beyond PHP 5.4, we had very regular PHP releases. So the increments are quite small. Things typically don't break. So check the change log, just have a look. Some extensions did change quite a bit between versions. Enable the e-deprecated flag for error reporting, compile your new version, and run the web server. So use that built-in web server as your initial test platform for upgrading PHP. Run your unit tests with it as well. Um, whatever else you have, if you're using Travis, for example, you can just add whichever version will be your target and it will run your build for that. And then work through, upgrade a test platform. If you have multiple web servers, perhaps try upgrading one of those. Do remember if you're using any PECL extensions, those need to be reinstalled. Um, and then just go for it. Particularly once you get, like I say, PHP 5.4 onwards, the increments between versions are relatively small. The, those painful days of upgrading the 5.2 to 5.3 is quite tricky. Once you get beyond that, they're long gone. We're, we're releasing in a much more structured way. And uh, I would expect you to be able to do that without too much hassle. So there's a, a little strategy there for you to try if you do need to upgrade your platforms whenever you're ready.